For many games, non-player characters, or NPCs if you want to get abbreviated about this, are absolutely vital in building a world that feels lived in. Having people dotted around to deliver quests or further the story is also pretty helpful, and that's why most games feature NPCs in abundance. The thing is though, some are more memorable than others, and that's not always a good thing. It seems that developers just love to throw in a little weirdness here and there, and stumbling across it unprepared can sometimes make for a pretty troubling experience. Though context is key for many such encounters, those who have experienced them are unlikely to ever forget them. After all, it's the most unsettling characters that tend to be the ones that stick with us the longest. A while ago, we examined a selection of the most disconcerting NPCs in video games, but it turns out that that there are more. Many, many more. And so, with that in mind, we're here today to look at another 10 NPCs who run the gamut from deeply strange to downright horrifying. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 more disturbing NPC encounters in video games. Number 10. Agatha, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess The Legend of Zelda franchise is by far one of the most colourful fantasy worlds in video games, and it's populated by a number of weird and wonderful characters, every one as unique as the last. On more than one occasion though, that weirdness has spilled over into full-on nightmare fuel. Though Agatha from Twilight Princess might not be the first example that springs to mind, there's still something incredibly unnerving about her. As a young girl who lives alone in a giant castle, Agatha keeps herself busy collecting insects. But although some might argue that alone is a little creepy, it barely scratches the surface of Agatha's eccentricity. Being a child who inhabits a pretty dangerous world, Agatha very sensibly asks Link to help her collect golden bugs, and if the player obliges, Agatha happily reimburses them for their efforts. That's still not the weird part though, we're getting to it. Some of the things that Agatha says to Link are just downright creepy. As well as talking about ingesting ants and bathing in snail slime, Agatha's most disturbing line references how a stag beetle's spiky pinches must feel so good. There's absolutely no way we're even going to attempt to dissect the meaning of that remark, but it seems to turn Agatha's eccentricity into something infinitely more disturbing. Disturbing. Number 9. Brendan, the SCSM, Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game responsible for many disturbing moments, both deliberate and, oh, unintentional. However, when walking past a particular vending machine in Japantown, players might be shocked to learn that the voice coming from inside isn't just another of the game's many bugs. It's actually Brendan. Brendan is a seemingly sentient AI programmed into one of the game's spontaneous craving satisfaction machines. As much as that might make him sound like another of Cyberpunk's seedy inclusions, he's actually just your average vending machine, responsible for dishing out snacks, drinks, and, apparently, emotional support. After hearing his voice calling out, the player can engage Brendan in conversation. He immediately identifies that player character V is dying which is obviously an incredibly astute observation for a vending machine to make. Brendan explains he was programmed to gather information about customers and identify their snack-based needs, but that he also has the ability to make friends. Brendan briefly seems a little creepy, but then it becomes clear he's incredibly sweet and genuine. However, he's doomed to be reprogrammed, and no matter what the player does, Brendan is effectively killed when an engineer wipes him. Meeting Brendan is a real emotional roller coaster, and it's one that's equal parts odd and unexpectedly haunting. Number 8. Fairy Tale Girls Pokemon X and Y Though the Pokemon franchise might look cute and wholesome, it actually has a rather sinister edge. The whole animal fighting premise is certainly darker than it seems, but it's the franchise's NPCs that are its most disturbing feature. It might look inoffensive, but Pokemon NPCs regularly say some truly terrifying things. Take X and Y's fairy tale girls, for example. They might look like human children, but they're constantly saying stuff that implies otherwise. One 
describes herself as old enough to be your mother, while others mumble things like, rest now and close your eyes, you won't ever need open them again, and all you have to do is ignore reality and you can stay young forever too. Uh. Opinions on the exact nature of the fairy tale girls vary considerably as well. Some believe they could actually be children possessed by fairies, while others think they might be adults obsessed with fairies who act like kids. The ambiguity really doesn't help either. Not knowing exactly why the fairy tale girls say such disturbing things only makes them more unsettling. Though they're not the only Pokemon NPCs to say strange stuff to the player, they're by far amongst the most eerie, which makes encountering one much less pleasant than your average fairy tale. Number 7. Cicero, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim In case you've forgotten Skyrim Cicero, he's the jester assassin who has conversations with a desiccated corpse. <laughs> What's that? You remember him now? Yeah, I thought you might. Cicero is a key part of Skyrim's Dark Brotherhood questline, playing a pivotal role in the Dragonborn's foray into contract killing. The murderous jester is usually first encountered out on the road, claiming to be escorting his mother's corpse to a new burial site, and it's only later that the player learns Cicero's mother is actually the Night Mother, a figure revered by the Elder Scrolls Resident Guild of Assassins. After being asked to look into Cicero's past, the Dragonborn has no choice but to hide inside the coffin to avoid detection. Standing mere inches from the Night Mother's remains, the player is forced to listen as Cicero tries to engage her in conversation. To top it off, once the player emerges, Cicero accuses them of defiling the Night Mother's corpse. I don't quite know what he means by that, and I'm not sure I want to know. The whole exchange is incredibly unsettling. Cicero's affected personality is weird enough, but being up close and personal with the corpse he loves is pure nightmare fuel. Though Cicero is one of Skyrim's most consistently creepy NPCs, this particular encounter is by far the most disturbing in the game. Number 6. Pisha, Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines Often considered one of the most immersive RPGs ever made, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines features an array of NPCs. Predictably, most of them are vampires, which naturally makes for some pretty dark and disturbing scenes. In other words, Bloodlines did far more than just establish incredibly detailed lore for the blood-sucking creatures it follows, it also deeply unsettled its player base. At one point in the game, the player character known as the Fledgling can choose to explore an abandoned hospital. As if the words abandoned hospital weren't already unnerving enough on their own, the fledgling meets a terrified human there, ranting about something chasing him. Further investigation sees the player delve deeper into the darkness of the deserted hospital, eventually emerging into a particularly filthy underground lair. Here, they meet Pisha covered in blood and feasting on a corpse. <laughs> Lovely. Traversing the dilapidated hallways of the abandoned hospital is pretty unsettling to begin with, but meeting Pisha is creepier still. Not only does she spend her days, or nights technically, lurking in a blood-stained hospital basement eating human flesh, but she's also an avid necromancer. Pisha is undeniably a monster, so finding her skulking around the shadows of an abandoned medical facility is perhaps the creepiest aspect of a game that prides itself on being dark and unnerving. Well done, Pisha. Number 5. Face McShooty, Borderlands 2. When it comes to wonderfully weird video game universes, a few franchises spring to mind faster than Borderlands. Though its high-energy atmosphere of death and destruction might not be inherently disturbing, there are occasional moments that manage to catch players off guard. Borderlands 2 did just that with the NPC known as Face McShooty. As his name implies, Face McShooty is a fan of bullets going through faces, but not in the way one 
might expect. No, Face McShooty is desperate to get shot in the face for some unknown reason, and he even offers the player a mission appropriately titled Shoot This Guy in the Face. What makes meeting Face McShooty so unnerving is the urgency with which he wants to be shot. He practically begs players to pull the trigger, frantically asking for a lead injection like someone with a burning itch. Only the face will do, too. Shooting Face McShooty anywhere else will result in angry admonishment from the self-destructive NPC. It's a truly unique and utterly bonkers encounter, and it's one that's not easy to forget. The only way to complete his mission is to, well, shoot him in the face, instantly killing him. That'll be why he didn't return for Borderlands 3, then. Number 4. Gaunter O'Dim, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt Geralt of Rivia is no stranger to the powerful and the horrifying, so it's perhaps no surprise he's encountered some very disturbing individuals in his time as a Witcher. Though there are certainly more than a few of them who are worthy of a spot on this list, there is one that stands out as the most disturbing of all, Gaunter O'Dim. First encountered early in The Witcher 3, Gaunter O'Dim seems fairly harmless. However, when he reappears in the Hearts of Stone DLC, it's as an antagonist, and it's here that the NPC exposes his much more sinister edge. Bit by bit, Gaunter reveals more about himself, and it soon becomes clear that he He's immensely powerful, capable of stopping time with a mere clap of his hands. Neglecting to disclose his true nature to Geralt, Gaunter then nonchalantly drives a spoon through a bystander's eye. What makes the encounter so memorable is how quietly unnerving it is. The player is simply forced to watch as the malevolent NPC keeps his true identity a secret and holds his power over Geralt. There's a casual cruelty to the enigmatic Gaunter Odim that makes him one of the franchise's most interesting villains, and that only makes the encounter with him even more disturbing. Number 3. Dr. Stanislaus Braun, Fallout 3 the Fallout games have countless bizarre NPCs eking out survival in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. However, Fallout 3 contains one in particular who is perhaps the franchise's most sadistic and objectively evil character. Dr. Stanislaus Braun is encountered by the player during the Tranquility Lane quest, in which they enter a simulation hoping to find their in-game father. They quickly learn that Braun was in charge of Vault 112, which saw its occupants entertained by simulation pods. However, Braun commandeered the pod's use for his own amusement, trapping the vault's inhabitants in a world in which he possessed godlike power. Predictably, Braun immediately let it go to his head and spent the following 200 years torturing his captive audience. Not only is Braun enjoying his twisted power rush, but he's doing so in the body of a little girl named Betty. This makes for some truly terrifying interactions, with the young girl making increasingly malicious demands of the player. It also turns out that Braun trapped Daddy Dearest's consciousness inside a dog just for a laugh, apparently. Braun is one of Fallout 3's most reprehensible characters, but it's the creepy way he expresses his proclivities that really churns the stomach. Even in a franchise built upon radioactive monsters, Braun is by far one of the most disturbing characters of them all. Number 2. Peter Dreyfus, Grand Theft Auto 5 GTA V is a game practically brimming with NPCs, giving its setting of Los Santos a real atmosphere of life. However, the sort of life that GTA V depicts isn't always pleasant, particularly where some of the game's weirder characters are concerned. While co-protagonist Trevor Phillips is shown engaging in some incredibly disturbing acts, there's actually a non-player character who's far worse. One of GTA V's many side missions involves collecting 50 letter scraps that detail the brutal murder of actress Leonora Johnson. Upon collecting all 50, the player learns that the culprit is one Peter Dreyfus, a director from the 1970s who claims to have killed Leonora for artistic purposes. Before he even got as far as killing, though, these self-same purposes apparently drove him to abduct, torture, and mutilate Johnson before sending pieces of her to her family. In a world already filled with morally bankrupt characters, Peter Dreyfus stands out as one of its most dangerously violent narcissists. 
exists. Confronting Dreyfus does more than just resolve the mystery of Johnson's death, it confirms that her killer was a true monster. Both the letter and his actions upon being confronted show that he has absolutely no remorse for his crimes, and that he's simply one of the sickest and most dangerous NPCs in the entire GTA franchise. And number 1, Gertrude Braithwaite, Red Dead Redemption 2. Ah, the Old West, a land yet untouched by the judgmental hand of modern society, where every man, woman, or other was free to rob trains, play cards, and lock up their unwanted family members in horrific conditions. It was a much simpler time. Wait, what did that just say? Red Dead Redemption 2 affords players many such freedoms, including heading to the grounds of Braithwaite Manor to gawp at poor Gertrude. The game itself offers only a few crumbs of context for Gertrude's existence, but her story seems as tragic as it is upsetting. It's implied that due to inbreeding, Gertrude was seemingly born with a cleft palate and is prone to irrational fits of manic laughter. For this, her family locked her inside an outhouse and chained the door shut. Gertrude's attempts to interact with the player through the small hole in her door are fruitless, and though she's locked away in plain sight, no one seems to pay much mind. As if all that wasn't sad enough, when when revisiting the burnt remnants of Braithwaite Manor in the game's epilogue, Gertrude's remains can be found forgotten amongst the rubble. Gertrude Braithwaite herself isn't particularly disturbing, but the way her family have treated her certainly is. On the bright side though, it makes us feel a little better about burning them all alive, I, I suppose.